All right, my name is Oliver Oites. Uh, I am a part of Dr. C. Prasad and Dr. Tarani's group. And today I'm going to be sharing with you research into reactive extrusion additive manufacturing known by the acronym MARINE, specifically with applications to magnetically actuated shape memory thermoset composites. So REAM is an additive process that makes use of a two-part thermoset resin. Um, so you have your catalyst uh, reservoir and your resin over here. They are metered at the appropriate volume ratio and then pumped through a static mixing nozzle, which induces turbulence in the flow, mixing your resin and your catalyst together. The material is then deposited and allowed to cure in situ. So there are a couple benefits associated with this in situ curing. Um, first, you mitigate anisotropy by promoting cross-linking between part layers. Additionally, there's no need for external heating elements, uh, right? Because this isn't a melt extrusion process. It's not a sintering process. Uh, the only energy associated with running the system is uh, the energy used to position your nozzle and to pump your materials. By using a two-part thermoset formulation, uh, you sort of open the range of material properties that you can get from ream parts uh, by virtue of just having a wide variety of compatible material feedstocks. Additionally, if you include multiple pumps, multiple nozzles, uh, you can achieve multi-material mixing and extrusion. Uh, using a liquid feedstock uh, promotes the very rapid building of parts because again, there's no melting, there's no laser sintering. You don't need to process your materials during printing. You simply mix and extrude. Additionally, a liquid feedstock is uh, going to be more receptive to inclusion of solid additives because again, there is no need to melt the material. It is already in liquid form. You add your solid additives, degas the material, and it's ready to be used. So we've got um, three ream systems. I'll be sharing two of them with you today. This is our uh, first generation desktop system. So you can see we've got our material reservoirs. Our metering system in this case is a piston pump with a fixed volume ratio of four to one. Uh, and what we've done is we've taken an existing off the shelf FFF printer and uh, converted it into our ream system by replacing the original FFF print head with our mix manifold and mixing nozzle. Uh, we've also converted the metering system actuation from pneumatic over to uh, stepper actuation. And so this allows us to control the pumping system with the 3D printer's motherboard uh, such that we get appropriate material deposition. We also have a robotic system that makes use of a six degree of freedom robotic arm, uh, specifically we're using a Yaskawa MH80. Um, we're also not using uh, piston pumps, right? We're using these progressive cavity pumps that, that move discrete pockets of your feedstock material through the length and out the outlet. Uh, and by using these progressive cavity pumps, we can use materials with um, volumetric ratios that aren't necessarily four to one, right? Because the desktop system, you have a set ratio here it is adjustable. So we've kind of opened the window of uh, you know, compatible materials. Additionally, by using a robotic arm, we're not limited in printing in planes parallel with the ground, right? So we can do conformal printing. Here is the desktop system in action. We're printing a long horn, which is approximately 200 millimeters from horn tip to horn tip, um, layer height of two and a half millimeters. And you can see we're almost done with the first layer already. This is a very quick process. Uh, the material that we're printing with is a densely cross-linked epoxy. Just for your edification there. So a couple of notes about REAM systems generally and their capabilities. Uh, as I mentioned once or twice by now, we can achieve very large build rates uh, in excess of three orders of magnitude greater than your standard FFF system. So here we have 
down at the bottom of this graph here, uh, a Stratasys Mojo, which is a fairly typical uh, entry-level desktop FFS system. And over here, we have our desktop green system um, using the volumetric flow rate that you just saw in the previous video, uh, just over 100 milliliters per minute. Though it is notable that we've demonstrated volumetric flow rates um, of 220 milliliters per minute. We can process highly viscous materials up to 100 Pascal seconds, as well as materials with high volume percentages of solid additives. Uh, so be they uh, carbon fiber to increase part strength or um, active additives such as iron oxide to impart magnetic properties to your composite materials. There's a low energy input because again, uh, the only energy associated with using the system is the energy that goes into positioning your nozzle and pumping your material. Um, nor is there any energy associated with curing your parts, right? This is an in situ curing process. Uh, so there's no need to put your part in an oven, for example, after part creation. So I mentioned uh, during the title slide that the motivation, at least for me, with uh, use of REAM is the creation of shape programmable magnetically active thermoset composites. So let me explain what shape memory polymers are really quick. Uh, they work as follows. You have your original as manufactured shape um, created with your shape memory polymer. You heat it above the glass transition temperature and this allows the constituent polymer chains to move more freely and slide against one another. You deform your part into you a uh, desired temporary shape while it at, is at this elevated temperature. Afterwards, you cool the part and this locks in the strain energy. So you've got this semi-permanent shape down here. And if you wanna to return to your as manufactured shape, you simply heat your part once again above the glass transition temperature. And this allows the polymer chains to release that stored strain energy and the part will unfurl back to your original shape. Magnetic polymer composites, uh, as you may have guessed, are polymer matrices with embedded magnetically active particles. And so you can get a variety of deformation modes from such composites, depending on the orientation of the composite and the orientation of your external magnetic field. So you can get torque bending force that will lead to either elongation or compression. And as is the case with any magnetically active material, if it's not rigidly fixed to something and you can manage to overcome friction and or gravity, you can also get translation when exposed to an external magnetic field. So what we've done is we've created a multi-material composite consisting of a shape memory polymer backbone over here, the SMP, with a magnetically active elastomer, an MAE, placed at the edges. So what I've done is I've heated up the SMP with uh, a splash of hot water that you saw at the beginning of this video. I'm shape programming it now. I'm holding deformation. It has since cooled, locking in our temporary shape. Let me move my laser a little bit. There you have it. And now I will return to the as manufactured shape by again, heating up the part with hot water. And as you can see, the return is rather speedy. So any questions? I have a poster down here to my right. Uh, if you'd like to ask anything later, I can share with you uh, aspects of future work, um, et cetera.